Okay, so let's see how to install OpenFone in Windows and for this video in any operating system, the instructions can apply for Linux or Mac or whatever operating system, okay? So important sense that all the instructions that I'm going to show you will be using Windows subsystem for Linux, okay? So if you don't have it, please install it. We're not going into details. The installation is very straightforward, very easy. So just follow the instructions in this website. Uh, very important also, we are using OpenSUSE. There are many operating systems. This is our choice. So maybe the instructions will change from operating system to operating system. Will be the library will have another name or the location of this file will be in another directory, but it's nothing big. Okay, just read now your screen, your error, what you have, and you will get your way around. But remember, we're using OpenSUSE and in the time of this recording that we're going to do everything for OpenFone 11 and OpenSUSE 15.5. Okay, so now let's get out our hands dirty. So we're going to install uh, OpenFone 11 using OpenSUSE 15.5 with OpenSUSE uh, with uh, Windows Subsystem Linux. So let's assume that you install Windows Subsystem Linux, which is straightforward. How do we install OpenFone 11? So in the video description, I will put there you know, the link to download here. We have some basic instructions, the basic libraries that we need to install. We're going to do everything live. Okay, so if we already test it, so it should, everything should be okay, foolproof with no problem. So you're going to see that the installation should be straightforward. Remember, this is open source 15.5. And if you're using something else, maybe the library will have a different name and so on. Okay, so let's go with the installation. So the first step, so here I already installed uh, OpenSUSE 15.5 and I have a very clean installation, okay? So I basically, I don't have anything as a user, okay? So the user is CFD and nothing there. So let's see install OpenFone. So the first step, we want to put everything in a directory called OpenFone. So we use the command nkdir. So I'm not going also into details about this basic uh, Linux commands. Okay, I think you already know that, but in any case, in the video description, you, you, you will have a link to a video how to do that. So after you have that, uh, in the video, uh, in the link of open phone here, we can go download. We want to download the repository. Now let me go source go here and we can download the latest revision. Okay. So you have some basic libraries. So see that already the people from open phone are giving you this instruction. So this instruction will work. However, depending on your Linux version, you might need to change one word here or there, but it's not a big deal. So let me, let's do the first step, which is downloading OpenFone. So this is here, you go there, let's download. And I want to download OpenFone 11. Okay, so what I want to show you that this is not going to work because we're missing some libraries. So, libraries or programs. So it basically is missing the program GIT. So as you go here, you will see that it is asking, no, it's telling you that, okay, you need to install some basic programs. So let's do this. However, I am going to give you, as I told you, uh, oh, we already tested and we know all the libraries that you have here. So here I have the libraries that we need to install and let me do it here for you. So in the video description, you will have the link to just to get this installation file. So we go here, we install these files. Uh, in this version, I put the root password and it's going to install a whole bunch of programs. And we're going to do exactly the same now for this one, this one, this one, so on. So up to this point, we're going to have all the programs and then we have some additional libraries that we're going to see later, but basically we're going to install now the most important pro uh, libraries.
Okay, so now we go next step. We would be this one. Okay, so pay attention to the libraries that we're installing. And remember that if you're using another operating system, it might be that it is called, you now the program of the library will have a different name and so on, but it's not a big deal. Okay, you can find, you can find that very easy. Okay, at this point we're done. We install all, all those programs. So we, now we go to the second, the search line here. Just copy and paste and everything is installed. Okay, now let's move to the other one. So these are the most, basically the most important ones. Now here we have the compilers and developer libraries, MPI, C++ and so on. Very important. Then we move to this one that we have the X11 uh, libraries. So let's copy and paste. So remember, we're installing the basic libraries. You can, inst you can install much, much more. It's up to you, but this is the basic libraries to get up and fun running. Okay. So we're done here and now we move to this one here. So let's do copy and paste. Yes. So always a set all the options. There is no problem. Now we move to the other one here. Get it. This is okay. And pretty much these are the most important libraries. And at this point you will be able to compile up for now we're going to go into auction and library. So this one that we're going to install is genome or jedit. Now this is the text editor. So you can install any text editor for whatever reason. I, I like to use Jedit, but you can also use a uh, sublime text that I extremely recommend. It's also free. So the, here I'm running in windows, but also you have it in Linux and actually in this script that I'm going to share. These are these texts you want to install that in, in Linux. Okay. So let's wait for this. It is installing many libraries and let's wait at this point until we end this phase. Okay. So we install the basic libraries and now we can go and install that. We were in this final step, get it. It's a nice editor, but there are many of them. It's up to you for whatever reason I like this one. So we install Jedit. It will it will install some other dependencies. And just to show you Jedit, basically you type there there in the terminal. You get this one, and then you can just edit your text files. Uh, important that it might look very small the text here, but you can you can change you now your text. You have preferences to increase you now the the text size and so on, but also you can change your screen resolution. So it's not a problem for me. It's okay. I'm not going into details, but you can change all that stuff. Okay. Now that we installed this one, you have also sublime text. So let me show you also, this is, as I say, this is copy and paste. So the instructions that I'm going to give you, they are foolproof. So this is, we add repository here. Okay. We enable that. Put it there, everything okay. And now the final line will install Sublime Text, which is a fantastic text editor. It is free, so I strongly recommend it. It's, it's very handy. Yes, and, and there you go. So to run Sublime Text, you type in the terminal SUBL, and there you go. This is Sublime Text. So see that. This is Sublime Text in Lin in Windows, and now you have it in Linux. Windows subsists in Linux. Same stuff that maybe the text would be a little bit small. You can change that in the screen resolution. It's not big big of a deal. Okay, so now we have these basic tools, and there are some other tools here. So now the next step before compiling everything, these are 
uh, tools related to uh, Qt, uh, Qt5 and BTKs. This is for the compilation of Paraview. So if you, if you don't want Paraview, don't pay attention of this, but if you want Paraview, you can install this library. Again, it's just copy and paste. So we use this one. This is a very important library. And this is many people ask us, how do we compile Paraview you know, in OpenSUSE? Because everybody has problems you know, in the compilation. It's an error with some missing libraries. So this first library that you have here is the most important one. So you see here that I put Bingo, that one will resolve this problem with the Qt help. Then you have the other libraries. Yeah, it's speaking, all of them are important. So just to mention that is you have older versions, 15.4 and 3, this is the libraries that you should use to solve that problem that you might have when installing. Again, remember this applies only for OpenSUSE. If you're using Ubuntu, it would be different. Okay, I'm not a Ubuntu user, so cannot help you much there. Okay, so we install the other libraries, yes. And so far, everything is clean. We are super happy. We have it there. And this is also, this is an optional library. I also recommend it. You need it, but I recommend it to install. Okay, so sometimes you have maybe some plugins in Paraview and you want to use so in a script and so you need those libraries. It, tends to, it is, as you see, it is installing many files, but I recommend just to, to have like library also available. Okay, so let's wait and then we move to the next step. Okay, so we install all the files in this step. And at this point we are done, we can go and uh, download the libraries. So important, I'm following these steps here, but remember that there are some extra steps. Okay, so this instruction that you have in the website of Open from the original website, they're not complete. They have some missing libraries. So I'm giving you the complete the complete stuff, all the library. So the next step is this one to download. So here just again, you can go copy and paste. Let's put it here. We're in open phone. So this is going to download the library. So we're downloading open phone 11. And then we can use this one copy. Okay. And I put it there and there you go. I have it there. So at this point, pretty much we're almost, almost there to do the installation. So the final step between uh, before compiling is that we need to add these lines in our bash RC. Okay. This is our environment variable. So as you go, let me use, okay, let me use sublime text is bash RC. Let me increase there. And basically we want to add this information look at that you just need to copy and paste so basically here we're giving the location of the mpi library for some reason in OpenSUSE, the mpi library is located here no it's not located in the user being that automatically is going to find it so you need to explicitly define the location so you need to give this okay otherwise when you try to compile uh, it will complain that it doesn't find the libraries. It's not only open for any other application that use open or, or, or MPI will comply. And then you have, these are the aliases. I like to work with aliases to source different versions. Okay. So here kind of, I'm going ahead of time. This one will be V2306. Okay. So here we're going to install C uh, open phone version 11, but also 2306. So that will be the next video, but very important to install. When we install this one, if we will fulfill all the requirements for this one, likely this one also will compile. Okay. There will be a few extra steps later. I'm going to show you, but it's not nothing. No, <clears throat> too different from what we have done. So you do this, you can close. And at this point, 
pretty much we can go and we can keep now here uh, okay we need to source this bash rc file okay so sorry so to source that we modify that we source it and now if i type phone uh, sorry of 11 to load that the open phone version and now if i type phone and if it goes to this directory it means that i have everything i ready to go so at this point we can go ahead for the compilation so the compilation we can go and compile right right ahead open phone so see that the step i mentioned that how to update everything and so on so you can go and compile open phone all the solvers and everything or you can compile first part of you very important you don't need to compile part of you you can install the pre-compile binary but i want to show you the compilation now that everything goes smooth so here you have the instruction okay so first it will tell you okay you can go okay install part of you okay so let me go let's see the steps here okay this one this one and yeah let's go to part of you so be careful that part of you also requires and a slightly different command line for compilation. So you have this script for part of you. However, here you have the instruction how you should compile it. So it's make part of you. And then as OpenSUSE is using a specific Q, uh, Qt uh, library, you need to know enforce this okay so be careful about that i don't know about uh ubuntu but yeah be careful of this is you have about this you have the instruction there so you just go type that and off you go so it's going to then load open for a uh, part of you the source code and then it's going to compile Part of you the compilation is a little bit time consuming okay i don't know how it will take so let me also launch here just to show you that this compilation uh happens in parallel and well so you have follows one of the our previous videos that we talk about sometimes it's a little bit tricky now with this intel processor that i use performance and efficiency course how to compare control everything but in this case there is no problem we can go and use all the processors so at this point now uh, it's compiling in parallel so say it's time consuming let's see the final result in a while okay so at this point the compilation is done as i told you it should go out of the box with no problems. So here, always read that it's telling you that you need to type this command just to, let's do it. It will update the environment variables and so on. So WN refresh. And just to stress that we have, oops, I closed it there. Oh, yeah, yeah we have followed exactly the same steps that we have here so first we install the dependencies remember i told you that these dependencies might be incomplete it's not a big deal but in the db description you have a link to this file okay where we have all the dependencies to install because here there are some missing dependencies then the next step is just download your version so here they put dev just put the number of the version that you want to install so we're in open phone 11 so in the future probably will be 12 and i hope the instruction will be exactly the same so it will be a fast video in the future and then we go to the next step with that we updated the uh source environment bash rc we source everything which was here these steps to go to the video to the uh text file now we added this where we have the mp8 libraries and the aliases and so on and then we just install part of you okay we use this command to install part of you remember that we added here this extra auction this extra flag 
to find the specific library. So we have a fully working installation now of Paraview. Now we go to the installation of OpenFront. As I told you, this might be a little bit time consuming. So I go here, a w make and i use minus j and it will use all processor so just to stress this one that this computer this is a portal computer this new crazy processors i have 24 cores so all this stuff we hopefully we're going to see blue and the compilation will be very fast so let me go here and we're going to wait a little bit I'm going to mute the microphone, okay, because also the computer will be, it will go crazy. Okay, so remember also when we compile Paraview, we compile in this library, then to compile OpenFone, we need to compile it in this library, in this directory, sorry, so let me type there. And as I will say, in the fan in my computer, it will go really loud because all the cores will be compiling. But actually, it's a fast compilation. So we recall probably will be like six or eight minutes, which is formidable. So let's wait a little bit and see you later. Okay, so at this point, the compilation is done. So we have everything here. You saw the processors, this was relatively fast. So pretty much we're done. So as we go back here to the page, the next step will be just to test the installation. And remember that as we install the source code, then you can update using this command, JT pool and so on. Uh, to mention something that there are some extra libraries that I didn't install. I will just put this, this, the video description, the link to get this file, extra files, no additional stuff, but not everything is necessary. We just, I just show you the basic libraries that you need to install to have a, a, a fully working, you no know, compilation process, trouble free. So to run now, let's test everything. Let's go to a tutorial. Remember that we're using OpenFone 11 and things change a little bit. So I hope you saw our previous video that where we show how to transition from previous versions to OpenFone 11. If you haven't seen that, please do so. So we generate the mesh and now we run the solver. Eco phone, simple phone, pimple phone, that stuff doesn't exist anymore. Now it's phone run. So phone run is running the solver. As you see, it is working perfectly. And now we can launch Parafone, close. And there you go. We have a fully working solution. Uh, remember that it's this text is too small for you. Always you can change the resolution in Windows. For me, it's not a problem. I still have a good vision, but yeah, many of you might have problems. But yeah, we have it fully working perfectly, okay, in Windows. Uh, important to stress that these same steps that we follow here are exactly the same steps if you want to install OpenFone in a virtual machine, like in this one that we have here, but here we have the graphical user interface. So to install those libraries, maybe you need to do it from the, from the user terminal. You can use just, which it is a nice user interface now for, for the terminal. And here you're going to have software management and you can look for that. This doesn't mean that using the GUI, it is easier. Probably you will realize that when you use the uh, text user inter interface, you can interact much faster than going through this interface. But here you just look for the files in the same way. So you have JT, you install and so on. Okay. So it is exactly the same as you use virtual machine. And if you have a standalone version of Linux, that is to say, if you're doing dual booting, nothing changed. And if you have Mac 
also would be pretty much the same. You can have Mac also with uh, with a virtual machine, or you can use the compiler. There are some small differences, but the steps, the missing li libraries will be pre pretty much the same. Remember that Mac is not open source; there is something else. But you will you I'm pretty sure that you will find your way around. So yeah, here you have the installation open from clean. And now in the next video, we're going to do the installation, but for the version. Okay. So we did the installation for open org in the next video, we're going to do open .com. As I say at the beginning, if you fulfill these requirements is you manage to compile this open phone 11, very likely you will compile this, uh, open phone, uh, dot com, but there is a slight difference when it comes to part of you. I will show you what is because there is something missing and that's all. Okay. So thank you for your attention. See you in the next video.